set of videos in chapter nine, we're going to do something that you learned how to do in kindergarten. We're going to count. Now, the point is no length and no width, and yet intervals on the real line, which are made up, made up of these dimensionless points, have length. This little mystery illustrates the distinction between continuous and discrete mathematics. Any interval a, b contains a continuum of real numbers, which is why you can zoom in on an interval forever and there'll still be an interval there. Calculus concepts like limits and continuity depend on the mathematics of the continuum. In discrete mathematics, we're concerned with the properties of numbers and algebraic systems that do not depend on that kind of analysis. Many of them are related to the first kind of mathematics that most of us ever did, namely counting. That's, going to work. That's what we're going to be doing for the rest of this lesson. Now, an example one here, arranging three objects in order. Count the number of ways that each procedure can be done. So if I've got students A, B, and C, I can line them up A, B, C. I can also line them up A, C, B. Then if I put B first, I'll have B, A, C or BCA. And then if I had put C for student first, I'll have CAB or CBA. So how many different ways can I arrange three students from front to back? That will be six ways. Now another way you can do this is if we take three times two times one. If we take our first student there's three different first students that you can choose. Once that first student is in place, there's two different options for the second place. Once the first and second person are put in place, there's one different option left. That gives us our six. Now, in letter B, it says arrange five books from left to right on a bookshelf. Now, I'm not going to do the ABC version. I'm going to use the counting method over there that we did on the right. Well, for the first book, there's five ways to do it. Once the first book is put down and arranged, there's four ways to do the next book. Then three ways to do the third book, two ways, and then finally there's one way left. If we do five times four times three times two times one, that will be 120 different ways you can arrange the books on a bookshelf. Scientific studies will usually manipulate one or more explanatory variables and observe the effect of that manipulation on one or more response variables. The key to understanding the significance of the effect is to know what is likely to occur by chance alone. And that often depends on counting. For example, exploration one shows a real world application of example one. Now, a salesman for a copy machine company is trying to convince a client to buy his $2,000 machine instead of his competitor's $5,000 machine. To make his point, he lines up an original document, a copy made by his machine and a copy made by the more expensive machine on table, and asks 60 office workers to identify which is which. To everyone's surprise, not a single worker identifies all three correctly. The salesman triumphantly states, that, his, that this proves that all three documents look the same to the naked eye, and that therefore the client should buy his company's less expensive machine. This happens all the time in business when the salesmen come and try and sell something. Now, what do you think? Each worker is essentially being asked to put the three documents in the correct order. How many ways can the three documents be ordered? Well, there's three ways to put the first document. Two ways to put the rest out of one, so that means six different ways. Suppose all three documents really do look alike. What fraction of the workers would you expect to put them in the correct order by chance alone? Well, there's going to be one out of six. One out of six by chance alone would put them in the correct order, because the correct order is one of those ways. Now, if zero people out of 60 put the documents in correct order, should we, all, should we conclude that all three documents look the same to the naked eye? No, we shouldn't, because there's no way that they could all look the same to the naked eye, just because they didn't put them in the correct order. 
Now, can you suggest a more likely conclusion that we might draw from the results of the salesman experiment? Well, he probably rigged the experiment to prove that his machine is the better one and that they should buy it. We don't know that it was the original. We don't know that all three documents, they could have been the same. That's part of it. You would not want to draw the tree diagram of ordering five objects, but you should be able to see in your mind that it would have been five times four times three times two times one, so 120 branches. A tree diagram is a geometric visualization of a fundamental common principle known as the multiplication principle. So that is the multiplication principle of counting. If a procedure P has a sequence of stages, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to N, and if S1 can occur in R1 ways, and S2 can occur in R2 ways, and Sn can occur in R sub N ways, then the number of ways a procedure P can occur is the product R1 times R2 all the way up to Rn, depending on how many different ways we have. Now it's important to be mindful of how the choices at each stage are affected by the choices of the preceding stages. For example, when choosing an order for the letters A, B, C, we have three choices for the first letter, but only two choices for the second, and one for the third. Exactly what I said in example one. Now, let's use the multiplication principle here. The Tennessee license plate shown here consists of three letters of the alphabet followed by three numerical digits. Actually, it's a little backwards there. Find a number of different license plates that could be formed. If there's no restriction on letters or digits, it can be used. Well, for the digits 0 through 9, there are actually 10 choices. So if there's no restriction on the digits, letters or digits can be used, meaning I can repeat them. It means I have 10 choices for the first one, 10 choices for the second number, 10 choices for the third number, then we're moving on to letters, I'll have 26 letters for the first letter, 26 choices for the second letter, 26 for the third. So if you multiply these out, 10 times 10 times 10 times 26 times 26 times 26, that means there's 17576000. There's 17,576,000 different plates. Now, if no letter or digit can be repeated, going through that again, means I'll have 10 choices for the first one, but only nine choices for the second one, and then eight choices for the third letter or third number. Again, with the letters now, we'll have 26 choices for the first letter, but only 25 for the second letter, 24 for the third letter. Now you should be able to see that it is going to be less than part A. So 10 times 9 times 8 times 26 times 25 times 24. 1123 That's how many license plates there will be if you cannot repeat the numbers. Now, part B. There are four candidates for homecoming queen and three candidates for king. How many king-queen pairs are possible? Well, since there's four candidates for homecoming queen and three for king, there's going to be 12 possible pairs. Which means we'll have king one, king two, king three, matched with queen one, the 
So we'll have king one, king two, king three, match with queen two. All three kings. Match with queen three. And again, match with queen four. Now again, that did take quite a bit of time to figure out how many different possible pairs there were. So if you use the multiplication principle of counting, then you should be able to figure that out pretty quickly. 